Good afternoon. Welcome to our weekly livestock market update. I'm Brownfield News Anchor reporter Megan Grebner. With us is University of Missouri's Scott Brown. Good afternoon, Scott. Good afternoon, Megan. All right, we're going to switch things up a little bit, how we start things off. Typically, we uh, start with a market recap and what happened this week. But first, we're going to talk about uh, supply and demand report, and which was released earlier this week. And really, the big change is on the beef side. Yeah, I think if you look at uh, where WASDE came out uh, for July, we did see uh, beef production for 2017 increase by 270 million pounds uh, relative to the June report. So for me, you know, that, that spells uh, more beef supplies coming as we look ahead. And, and I really think we have to start to look at a cu- couple of things when we look at the beef side. Number one, uh, perhaps slaughter is going to be larger than we would have anticipated. Uh, but number two, also, I think weights are moving higher as well. If you look at uh, uh, current information in terms of, of cattle uh, slaughter weights, we are starting to see them return closer to year ago levels. Uh, a lot of discussion about where that goes for the remainder of this year. But uh, if we keep moving weights back towards year ago levels or get them above year ago levels, we know we have more beef supplies. On the slaughter side, you know, I think a lot more discussion uh, in terms of, of what's going on in the Dakotas. We've got a, a, a number of places where it's uh, extremely dry at this point in time, starting to get a lot of reports about uh, especially cow-calf pairs who no longer be sold, being sold as pairs. Those calves are going uh, somewhere else and, and the cow's likely going to market at this point. So um, that, that area that's uh, in pretty severe drought, um, about 10% of, of uh, beef cow inventory resides in, in that area. Um, I, I, so it is critical for them. Uh, it's very interesting when you think about where the rest of the country sits, much, uh, a much better situation relative to uh, what's going on in that area. So um, it's, it's a little bit of mixed bag when you start looking at what weather's been doing to the cattle uh, side of the equation. Scott, as we take a look at those numbers also uh, on the grain side of things, how does that maybe factor in if we're looking at some pressure and more cattle coming to market, uh, what producers need to do to manage risk or manage input uh, cost on the input side? Yeah, so I think, Megan, you're at a very critical point when you ask that question right now. Uh, you know, we're sitting here with corn crop not made uh, probably at this point yet. Uh, what's the USDA do when when we start to see an August uh, yield estimate? Uh, I've already seen a lot of the, the private analysts out there who are suggesting the 170.7 yield that USDA has in its trend uh, is, is too high and they're com- coming in much lower than that. So there's probably some pressure, uh, frankly, uh, for some higher corn prices uh, as as we start to think about that August uh, WASDE report now. You know, we, we've got a lot of weather to get through here in the next several weeks that I think matter a lot. Uh, it's pretty hot in many places in the country. But from a risk management standpoint, I just remind us that th- there's a lot of reason why feed costs could go higher in the next uh, 30, 60 days. And we uh, going to get a cattle on feed report here if placements were to go higher. Uh, maybe some pressure, downside pressure on cattle prices as well. Just important to evaluate where you sit right now as a producer and how much of that risk you want to continue to maintain versus letting someone else uh, deal with the risk of lower, uh, potentially lower cattle prices and potentially higher feed costs. Scott, as we talk and, and look a little bit at that WASI report, anything on the pork side of things or it, uh, that we need to take note of? They actually lowered uh, pork production marginally in this last report, and I think that's really a, a result of what was, number one, less pigs per litter out of the last hogs and pigs report that we got, as well as some reduction in, in fairing intentions, if you will, out of the, the last report as well. I, I'm going to wait and see whether that uh, all comes to bear at, at the end of the day, but uh, you know, I think in, in many ways we're seeing uh, some higher pork prices that also uh, are, are likely resulting from what are uh, less what's a less production than, than what people would have thought beforehand. So, but not a lot of change when you look at uh, where Wazi was on the pork side. Just beef was where we saw probably the biggest uh, biggest change. Scott, as we uh, wrap up talking about Wazi, let's talk a little bit and get into that market recap. What are some news and notes uh, that we need to take from this week's market activity? Well, so the good news is, uh, Megan, we actually saw markets uh, higher across the board for both cattle and hogs this week. Uh, I'd say we called pork markets up about a dollar relative to a week ago. 
Uh, that pork cut out value was up about 50 cents uh, on, on the week. Uh, bellies were up four dollars. However, it was an interesting uh, week on the belly side. Uh, yesterday on Thursday, we were down four dollars and thirty-seven cents, which was the largest decline we've seen since April. Uh, belly prices have doubled since uh, we saw that decline in late April, but uh, a little bit of weakness may be in what's otherwise been a pretty uh, consistent uh, increase in belly prices. Yet we got that overall pork cutout uh, still up a little bit for the week. On the cattle side, we did get higher cattle prices this week. Fed cattle up about uh, uh, $2 for the week. Uh, when you look at both feeder calves and, and cattle, I'd say steady to five higher for the week. So it's nice to see some bounce after what was uh, a, a pretty tough week last week. If you look at the choice beef cutout, uh, down $7.26 for the for the week, that might uh, start to give us some indication of uh, some pressure still left on cattle prices really down across the board when you look at those individual components that make up that choice beef cutout. One of the things that we talk about all the time is demand. We talk about international demand or export demand for U.S. meat products, but here at home, uh, the domestic demand kind of looks at a couple of different or is impacted uh, by a couple of different factors. Uh, consumer confidence was released this week as we take a look at that. Uh, any changes maybe that, that could have a positive impact on our domestic demand? Oh, uh, well, I, I, I think we have some changes. I don't know whether I can classify them as having positive on, on domestic demand today with you, Megan, but uh, we got did get the July numbers, uh, the, the index of consumer sentiment coming in at 93.1 uh, for July of, of this year. That's down from the 95.1 of June that we saw. It's down about 10 points from where we started 2017. So when you look at consumer sentiment, uh, I, I get a little worried about the fact that we're moving in a, a different direction. Uh, I, I guess part of that, I would say, you know, we have a lot, had a lot of expectation about stronger GDP growth in this country, maybe uh, being able to see some 3% growth in uh, GDP. I think a lot of folks have parred back that uh, growth estimate to what's much uh, more around the 2% range that we have been seeing. Uh, since we came out of the very tough economic times. Um, so uh, I, I think on that demand side, we're seeing a little bit of par back. Uh, the, the index of consumer expectations, so looking forward, uh, you know, that's sitting there at 80.2 out of the July numbers. Uh, we were at 83.9 back in June. So even as, as folks look ahead, a little less optimistic uh, about the future. I, I worry about what that does in terms of of domestic demand longer term as we continue through the remainder of, of 2017. Does it also maybe look at us, do we look at that or, or proceed maybe with caution, especially as you look at maybe a decline in the consumer sentiment index coupled with higher prices on the retail side? Yeah, so we did get uh, uh, higher, oh, we got retail prices out uh, just recently as well. And for June, just to give you a little bit of background, that, that beef uh, retail price setting at $6.21 for June, that was up seven cents from May. Now, virtually unchanged from a year ago, uh, but the growth from May to June is, is uh, quite nice uh, in terms of uh, higher uh, beef retail prices from a producer price perspective. However, when you think about consumer sentiment going down and the fact that we're telling them that we want them to pay higher prices relative to what they paid the previous month, you do have to be worried about that longer term. Um, I, I look at this report on retail prices and we can look at steak prices for a minute. So steak prices increased 27 cents from May to June this year. It, it continues to remind me that we are seeing this idea that I think consumers might be trying to buy up in terms of the quality of, of meat products that they consume. Even when you look at pork, so pork prices uh, setting at $3.76 for June, uh, that's up three cents relative to May. So Higher retail prices, uh, when you see consumer sentiment actually moving in, in maybe the other direction, uh, you kind of worry about where that balance, I guess, might set longer term. Scott, as we wrap things up for this week, let's take a quick look ahead to next Friday or next week. Catalan Feed Report comes out. Uh, what are some things maybe that we're watching and we really need to, to take notice of uh, in that report? Yeah, I think when you look at Catalan Feed, a few things start to jump out at us, number one. Uh, might get a little indication of uh, whether we, we place some lightweight calves out of those uh, drought areas of the Dakotas. 
on, and whether that shows up in the report. Uh, more information on potentially how much Mexican calves have been coming into the U.S. and how many of those have gotten placed on feed. We expect to see a f fairly large increase in cattle placements uh, out of the report next week and, and perhaps even uh, uh, stronger cattle on feed numbers uh, up 3% perhaps uh, in, in terms of on feed. So getting that growth, I think we'll see out of those numbers. I'm very curious to see also we're going to get a, a look at a percentage of heifers versus steers as well. So perhaps we can get a little bit of read on uh, what we're doing in terms of the cow herd. Uh, the other report we'll get out next week. Uh, also, mid-year uh, cattle inventory estimates as as well will be coming out next week. Uh, since we didn't get a Janu uh, sorry a July 2016 uh, mid-year report, going to be a little tough to 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 know exactly what. Uh, uh, we're going to get when when NAS releases uh, this one in in 2017, but a little more information in terms of calf crop and and perhaps a little bit of indication of where beef cows are are going uh, out of that mid year cattle report as well. Scott, on the latter report, why is that so important for producers? Maybe as they're looking ahead and and gauging what's going to happen um, and and the impact it could have on the markets long term. Yeah, so I, I think a lot of producers, uh, when, when cattle prices have, have moved lower, uh, decided fairly quickly that beef cow inventory wouldn't grow much more. Yet when I kind of anecdotally look around this country and I see a lot of areas of the country where we've had a lot of grass uh, so far this year, I see pretty strong demand for heifers, pretty strong demand for uh, cows generally. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm very interested to see what kind of growth we might be able to, to see out of this report in terms of cow numbers. For me, it just reminds us of the risk that might lie ahead for lower cattle prices if we have been building the herd even more. And we definitely will talk about some more risk management tools for producers as we get into those report numbers next week. Absolutely. Anything else? I think that covers uh, much of what went on for this week. Scott, have a great weekend. We'll talk to you next Friday. Very good, Megan. To have our weekly livestock market update delivered to your email box every Saturday morning, go to brownfieldagnews.com, click subscribe. You can also submit questions and comments there. And for market updates twice daily, make sure to check out John Perkins' Market Minute. I'm Megan Grebner on Brownfield.